Thank you, Senator O'Neill. Senator Seward. Thank you, Mr Acting Deputy President. Today I participated in Science Meets Parliament, which is a wonderful event that enhances and strengthens our ties to the scientific community. I met and heard some inspiring people both at the dinner last night and at my um, session with scientists today. And they continue to advocate for innovative, evidence-based um, policy solutions to complex issues. I find it disappointing um, that the WA Premier, Mr Colin Barnett, and his cabinet couldn't in fact participate in such a wonderful activity, given that they aren't using science as a basis for their decisions. And of course, I talk about the WA shark cull. And the science just isn't there to justify this cull, because that's what it is. The Premier which I must say was aided and abetted by um, the Prime Minister, Mr Tony Abbott, and um, Minister Hunt, um, has avoided um, any proper scrutiny or any, in fact, any scrutiny of um, the um, shark cull. And of course, Mr Hunt gave an exemption without even doing an assessment of the impact um, of the shark cull and the drum lines that have been set off the metropolitan beaches of Western Australia and the southwest beaches, and I saw many of those on a um, trip I did to the southwest at the end of last week and over the weekend. He's avoided the scientific reality that culls do not mitigate the impact the, um, and reduce the risk, so-called risk, posed by sharks. They are ineffective in dealing with safety issues, but they are having a destructive impact on our um, shark and marine shark population and marine environment. Rather than seeking to learn more about the behaviour of sharks off WA beaches, the Premier has opted for a knee-jerk response to, that kills and maims our marine life in what is an indif indiscriminate cull. To compound matters, Premier Barnett is not fulfilling his commitment to minimise the impact of this shark cull on sharks, on, and particularly on small sharks, and has disproportionately impacted on sharks. The science needed to justify this approach, as I said, just isn't there. But unfortunately, this seems irrelevant to the Premier, who um, in fact wanted an even more extreme approach and wanted to be able to cull in the open seas. And there was even questioning the fact that the great white shark is a vulnerable uh, a vulnerable species listed under the Environmental Protection and Biodiversity uh, Conservation Act. This was a populist approach taken by the Premier, supported by the Prime Minister, Tony Abbott. And you need to look no further than the fact that the great white shark prevalence off the coast of Western Australia is between September and December. And yet when were the drum lines put in? They were put in in January and going through to April. Great white sharks are not, pre not largely prevalent in our waters. In other words, he wanted to be seen to be doing something rather than taking a much more considered scientific-based approach. Just last week, unfortunately, the WA EPA decided um, that it wouldn't assess the proposal, despite 23,000 West Australians, I understand the largest numbers of submissions to a proposal, to, despite the fact that 23,000 um, West Australians asked them to assess it. They said it would have, uh, that, it, that the impact would not be significant, and I'll come back to that in a minute. But they didn't actually consider whether this was going to be effective and reduce shark bites. They did release the second release of figures during this, um, uh, deploy, this uh, drumline strategy. We've only actually had official figures released twice, and they did release some last week. And up to last week, 104 sharks had been caught. Of these, 101 were tiger sharks, and 30 were above 30 metres, uh, three metres. Sorry. In other words, 30 had been destroyed, directly destroyed. However, there were more. There were 40 that were found dead in the line or had been destroyed. Now, of those others um, that have in fact been released, um, we don't know what their survival rate is. And I have, I'm tabling, and I know I'm not allowed to use props, so I'm not going to show it. But for those that will read and listening, 
The picture that I am tabling is of a tiger shark that was released off the drum lines yesterday, and it is bleeding quite extensively from a gash down its side caused by the hook that has, that has impacted on that shark. Now, the likelihood that that shark will survive is doubtful, and, and the likelihood that other sharks have survived is doubtful. And there were some media reports uh, two weeks ago of a, a lady um, seeing a shark damaged, um, suffering, obviously damaged, we think, by a hook through the head because, again, there's evidence that shows the hooks go through sharks' heads. So it is highly likely that although they've only recorded, recorded 40 tiger sharks dead, it is likely that there will be a large number more. There were also a black, a black tip shark caught, reported caught, and two mako sharks. Those mako sharks are also are listed, as well as the great white shark, is also listed um, for protection under the Environmental Protection and Biodiversity Conservation Act as a migratory species. In other words, again, requiring federal government um, uh, protection. These sharks are being killed indiscriminately, despite the fact that tiger sharks are not implicated in any of the recent um, unfortunate deaths as a result of, um, uh, tiger sh uh, of shark attacks. It is quite clear that, that this policy will not impact will not take great white sharks because they are not um, seasonally present, largely season seasonally present. So in other words, again, the government wanted to look as if they were doing something without any scientific basis that it's in fact going to reduce um, the, the risk and improve safety. If you look, unfortunately, often quoted to support this West Australian policy is the Queensland drumline policy. And fortunately, there has recently been an assessment of that Queensland policy by Professor Jessica Maywick, um, has looked at the Queensland figures. And, 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 said, and she raised the fact that there needs to be two key questions need answering. First, that there, is there clear evidence that drumlines reduce the number of human fatalities from sharks? And second, what is their cost in terms of killing marine life? And to this end, um, the Jessica and the other authors of the report analysed the publicly available figures for human fatalities in Queensland with data on the program's um, shark catch to provide an assessment of its effectiveness. Over more than half a century, the program has taken a large toll on wildlife, while any increase they find in human safety is equivocal at best. There has been a significant decline in Queensland's rate of shark attack fatalities, but that had started 40 years before the drumlines were first deployed. There has been no further reduction in fatalities since the program began, despite half a century of increasing drumline deployments. In contrast in their, to their contribution to human safety, the, the um, report finds, one thing that, they can, that, that could be um, that they could be certain of was the drumline's ecological cost. The most recent available data show that Queensland caught some 6,250 sharks on drumlines between 2001 and 2013, or well, that's an average of 480 animals per year. This included 35 different species, the most common being tiger sharks and then bull sharks and black tip reef whalers. White sharks, although considered a key target species in WA, represent less than 1 per cent of the Queensland catch, about five, ca uh, five caught per year. Only 3 per cent of the sharks killed on the Queensland drumlines are considered not to be at conservation risk. So, Based on this analysis, they concluded that shark-related fatalities in Queensland have declined in both areas with and without drumlines, with the deepest rates of decline before before their installation. The effectiveness of drumlines is difficult to evaluate as the rates of attacks before and after the, the deployment are both very low. Moreover, 30, 83 per cent of the drumlines are deployed at locations where a fatal attack had never occurred. The ecological cost of the drumlines is high, with 97 per cent of the sharks caught since 2001 considered to be of some level of conservation risk and 89 per cent caught in areas where no fatalities had occurred. In other words, 
please the Premier of Western Australia stop quoting the Queensland as a reason and an example of how drum lines work, because that evidence clearly shows that they do not. And the same message to Minister Hunt, don't rely on those Queensland figures because they don't work. In um, Brazil, they use a different approach, an approach that does work. And I ask, why didn't the Premier and Minister Hunt look at Brazil for an example of what works when you're using drum lines? In Brazil, they put them three kilometres out. In Brazil, they use circle hooks that don't damage the sharks, so they're able to, cap to, to capture the white sharks that are on the drum lines because they're not damaged by the circular hooks. And then they take them further out to sea and they let them go. And the tracking of those sharks shows that they just go on their migration routes. They don't kill them. And that has had a very, very high success rate. And where they see sharks in Brazil in the past, they've seen them where they have waste flowing out from rivers, highly contaminated water sources flowing out into the marine environment where sharks are attracted to. Now, in Western Australia, why isn't the government looking much more closely around where the attacks have happened and what environmental influences or non-environmental influences, in fact, in, for example, waste going into the water, that have in fact been associated with those attacks. I, in my trip down south, spoke to some of the locals, and from their understanding, they are not aware of that work being done, and they have not been um, consulted about for that sort of information. If you compare Brazil to what has happened in um, Hawaii between 1959 and 1976, um, that during that period there were 4,500 sharks were killed, that there was no significant decrease in the weight of shark bites recorded. So again, you've got an unsuccessful program where they were killing sharks, they haven't decreased the rate of attack. We're in Brazil where they're using a much more sensitive and selective approach. They have had much more success. So that takes me to the point of looking at what should we be doing to look at um, the impact, the um, perceived, because we don't know, increase in great white shark off the West Australian coast. We should be looking at um, what are the alternatives that are also being used overseas, besides the Brazil example. There is, of course, in better investment in research, better investment in understanding the marine environment, Understanding, and perhaps the other issue that was raised with me by locals when I was down in the southwest, is, for example, the increased cray fishing that's occurring in the southwest. And apparently, great white sharks' favourite food is crustaceans. So, just off the coast, and I saw this myself on the weekend, I could have swum out to the cray pots from Yelling Up Beach. There are cray pots there in the mornings. We're just in front of the drum lines, because the drum lines are only a kilometre off the coast. So not only do these sharks love crayfish, they also, in those pots, we are putting 1.4 kilos of bait in each pot, not to mention the bait that's on the drum lines. Do you think that's going to be an attractant for sharks? I reckon it is. Now, why aren't we looking at, these, at, these, at this information? Uh, we're not. The knee-jerk reaction is put drum lines in that attract the, the tiger sharks and kill the and, and the tiger sharks are the ones that are dramatically affected. There's also a very good example from South Africa called shark spotters, where they actually have put in place a sophisticated approach to having people actually watching the beaches and using a set of flags that indicate when there's a great white shark. Since on seven beaches they introduced that approach, there has been one fatality. And you know why? Because that particular surfer went in when the flag indicating a great white shark was there, he went in the water and he was attacked. So here we have another successful program that doesn't involve killing these animals. This is an indiscriminate cull 
of sharks. Because our Premier and the Government of Western Australia had a knee-jerk reaction, and because the Prime Minister and Minister Hunt decided they would aid and abet that, to make it look as if they were doing something. The Minister for the Environment abrogated his responsibility for looking after great white sharks. He's abrogated his responsibility to, in, to look at the implementation of the conditions that were set on this proposal. He said that he had put that he had agreed to the conditions that the WA government had imposed on itself. The WA government is not maintaining those conditions because they are not minimising environmental harm to the sharks of Western Australia. And the Minister for the Environment, who has responsibility for protection of the environment and biodiversity, is not reviewing or monitoring the implementation of those conditions. It is time that the Federal Minister for the Environment stepped up to the plate and said, this is enough. It has caused enough environmental damage. The in conditions imposed on this cull are being broken. Over 104 sharks have now been impacted. That is totally unacceptable in the marine environment. It is time the Minister for the Environment and the Prime Minister, who said two weeks ago that he wholeheartedly supports this cull, I say to the Prime Minister, think again, it is causing unacceptable damage. Minister for the Environment, do your job, enforce the conditions, stop this cull.